the system is derived out of systos which means bladder and a true cyst is always lined by epithelium and a pseudo cyst is one where there is fluid collection but there is no lining there is no epithelial lining that is called a pseudo cyst like you get pseudo cyst in pancreas why is it called a pseudo cyst it has no epithelial lining and otherwise the term per se when you say that lesion is cystic what are you trying to say that the lesion is got fluid in it yes so in the crude sense it means fluid yes and if this is getting lined by epithelium then it becomes a cyst or true cyst now when you talk of sebaceous cyst is right sebaceous glands open where around the hair follicles hair follicles so when they get blocked there is no drainage of this you are always sweating and something sweat is coming out sebum is also coming out it's meant for lubrication only yes sir i mean some animals have more of sebum you have less of it because you evolved so this when when you don't let it come out it collects and it keeps on growing in such the opening is blocked correct yes now once you realize there is a cyst or a cystic lesion you need to find out whether it is cutaneous or not subcutaneous or it is where sebaceous cyst naturally is a cutaneous cyst so what would i see first i'll see well there is a cystic lesion i mean there is a cyst which i'll confirm by doing the fluctuation you know that fluctuation is you stabilize it and then you do you push on one side can you see this finger you stabilize it and then use one finger to push it it goes up testing finger observing finger testing finger active and observing but if it is very small you may put both here or the other is what is called as the paget's test the paget's test is you fix it between the two with the left hand between the index and thumb it gets fixed then you press it in the center on top at the summit you press it to summit it expands this is called paget's test when it is very small you use paget's test otherwise you can do fluctuation but what is mandatory for fluctuation that the swelling has to be fixed because if the swelling is not fixed you can't do it so if you're doing it say in a hydrocele which you were asking you fix it and then you use both hands one is the testing and the other is the observing hand. this side this side this side this side so if there is a cystic swelling <coughs> what will i observe first whether it is arising from the skin or not if it is arising from the skin then skin won't be free from the swelling what we call as pinch an inch test pinch an inch so if you pinch it skin is free and pinch it it is not free yes. then you try to move it you can see that the skin remains fixed so if it is arising from the skin you have an easy simple way to approach it where the sebum where the you know the block was there will present as a punctum yes so when you talk about you keep hearing about you know punctum is diagnostic of a sebaceous cyst this is the reason because when you have a punctum it is a point where it is blocked visible it's a black spot blackish okay so cyst what do i do how do i know it's a cyst fluctuation then i need to find out where it what is its plane so the plane if it is arising from the skin the skin won't be free then i'll know of cutaneous cyst the cutaneous things are basically what sebaceous gland sweat gland air follicles etc so all the i mean this would this would be then known that it's a cutaneous swelling so it's a cyst arising from skin the diagnosis is simple sebaceous cyst what is the hallmark of a sebaceous cyst punctum yes if i see a cystic swelling with a punctum what comes to my mind 
If it is a soft swelling, but skin is free, what is the plane of the swelling? Subcutaneous. And fat at body temperature is liquid. That becomes lipoma usually. And you keep hearing about the slip sign for lipoma. The slip sign is when I press at one end, it goes to the other side. Press at this end, it goes to the other side. Press at this end, it goes to the other side. That's called slip sign. So subcutaneous, soft, will be slips. With slip sign. That will be lipo. It is liquid at body temperature. Fat is liquid at body temperature. So it will feel softer, but it's not cystic. So what do you call this? If you do fluctuation also, it will be positive. But it's not a cyst. That's why we call it pseudo fluctuation. What do we call it? It's very useful for you people, especially the other guy. So pseudo fluctuation, fluctuation, fixing into skin, pump tongue, these are features you need to look at. Before you call it sebaceous cyst. Sebaceous cyst is not subcutaneous, it is cutaneous. Lipoma is subcutaneous. Now, subcutaneous swellings, if they are formed, they are not lipoma usually. But anything which is tense will also be formed. When it is tense, it is too tense to be done to subject it to the Like if you have ever seen a balloon, when it is half filled, it is softer. You fill it completely, then it becomes very firm. That's the tension of it. Or I don't know whether you get, you guys get a different football today. The football earlier was the one where you had to fill in that. Uh, it had a bladder. Yes. And you know, you even the bladder used to be loose, not like the fancy ones today. And they used to have an opening the top where there was suture, so with the leather thing. You open it, bladder goes in, and it had a tip. You used to fill air, inflate it, close it and tuck it in and then we'll close with the sutures. That was not the sutures, but the leather strings and then we'll tie it. Now invariably, I don't know how, but that was not the part which was hit by the foot. It never was hurting. <laughs> but as a child, I would always think this, this is to be avoided. But it never falls that way. <laughs> Right? Yes. And when you are trying to hit a long ball, you will keep it, that stitch part up and you will take a shot. Yes. So that is uh, the tension of it. So bladder when you are filling it, initially it is soft, then it becomes hard. To the extent, football is not cystic. Football is hard, form, at least form. And if you don't have good shoe wear, for the, when you are when you're small, you may, wear, you may play without shoes also. A lot of children play without shoes. Then you could hit it. But when it's, it's got too much of wear in it, you can't. It becomes very hard. And that's what I'm trying to say. So then it becomes tense, which doesn't mean you will not get fluctuation. You will still get fluctuation, but it won't be soft. So when you use the term soft, I was trying to make you understand. It's not soft problems. Okay? But it's important to know if it is under the skin it is subcutaneous. If it is in the skin it is cutaneous. If it is deep you can't pack it. So whenever you say bladder, I told you the term cyst has originated out of cystos, bladder. But when you are palpating the bladder, is it fluctuant, cystic? No, it is firm. Because you are palpating it or percussing it through the empty abdominal wall layers. Yes, so to say, oh, okay, so therefore bladder is. But when you open up the abdomen, bladder is in front of you, then it is a softer. But even when it is full of, even if bladder is full of urine or saline, and when you are examining in a patient with a distended bladder, say acute retention of urine, yes. it will be firm. Okay, yes. and usually when we say that we could appreciate a full bladder, we don't say it based on palpation, we say it based on percussion. 
because you are palpating it through the anterior abdominal wall. So you are palpating the wall which has got muscles and muscles are firm. So urinary bladder is not from fluctuation. Be clear. You percuss to know the bladder is full. You can loosely use the term I could palpate the bladder because you can see the bulge but that is not the Naturally, hydrated cyst is not cystic. Why? Because imagine the abdominal wall, three layers of muscles. Under that, there is a cystic swelling. You will appreciate cyst. It's not cystic. Splenic cyst is not cystic. Hydrated cyst is not cystic. Therefore, they are firm. All intra abdominal swelling would be firm. I told you about retention of urine, you find bladder is very full. Yes. You can't fluctuate it. Yeah. Still you can percuss it. What is acute retention? Acute means sudden. And it's painful. Chronic is gradual, it's painless. Acute retention is sudden. Chronic is over a period of time. Like a patient with lower urinary tract obstruction, prostatic hypertrophy or stricture. They develop, you know, they have chronic retention, it's painless. But acute retention is an acute phenomenon. Yes. And in chronic retention, they don't advise that you should immediately de de put in a catheter and drain it. Why? Because the bladder, the vessels in the bladder, the plexus of veins in the bladder, they've, get, they've already got used to a particular pressure. So any cavity that is full for a long time, don't decompress it immediately. Because those veins also compensate for that, they have a higher pressure inside. So if you suddenly yes. decompress it, they rupture and bleeding would happen. You should get the result. So remember this, although you guys are looking at your MCQ question, I have created one for you. Acute retention of urine is painful, sudden, you can decompress immediately. Chronic retention is painless, gradual, don't decompress it immediately or suddenly because you will cause Rupture of the vessels, especially the vesicle plexus, and it will cause immature. Yes. This applies to anything which is collected. Massive ascites. Don't empty the abdomen completely. Don't put in a drain and let it drain and drain and drain and drain because all veins have got used to a pressure if it has been for a long time. And the sudden decompression will cause those pressures that are up to you. Taking the pressure surrounding the veins is reduced, they will rupture. That's a general concept. Suddenly don't decompress a chronically distended bladder or any cavity for the reason which I just told you. Is that clear? Yes. So you learned acute retention, chronic retention, cyst, plain, how to do fluctuation, what to do, when to do, when not to do, how to, how to understand the whole concept of these tests.